welcome to Etz Chaim, which means the Tree of Life. We're a messianic congregation that understands that Jesus is Yeshua, our Messiah, and He wants us to follow the Torah just as He did. Come check us out. You're invited to join us for our Saturday service at 1 p.m. You can also gain valuable insights at our 4 p.m. Bible study. Your questions are welcome. And now, with a weekly Torah reading, Rabbi Mordecai Silver. This week's portion is Vayetz. It means, and he went out. It's Genesis 28, 10 through 32, 3. Haftorah portion, Hosea 11, 7 through 14, 9. Or if you're using a Tanakh or the Hebrew Bible, it's verse 10. Introduction. When he leaves his family home, Jacob has nothing but a staff and the clothes on his back. He has been stripped of everything but the birthright and his father's blessing, both of them attained by questionable means. With his brother's threats ringing in his ears, he has been reduced to a primal state, as surely as Adam and Chava on their expulsion from the garden. In such a state, he is a perfect receptacle for a vision of God. Genesis 28, 13 through 15. And behold, the Lord stood above it, and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in you and your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Jacob's fleeing from his brother. He's running away from Esau. Because he tricked his father into giving him the blessing of the firstborn. Esau, when you read through that passage, claims that, Oh, he's done it again to me. He did it with the birthright. He didn't do anything with the birthright. Esau willingly gave him the birthright. Which, as far as I'm concerned, would have entitled him to the blessing of the firstborn because if he didn't think anything of his birthright, what do we care about the blessing of the firstborn? Well, the reason he cared about the blessing of the firstborn with is because the firstborn inherited a double portion of whatever his father had. And he got the leadership position. As we know, Esau became blessed anyway And he started up his own house or tribe, if you want to call it that. And he went his own direction. And we still deal with his descendants today. They're still out there. And they're still trying to get what they consider to be the birthright back. The only thing is, is that they go all the way back to Abraham and Ishmael. And then they keep working their way down. As they come down to where we are today. But here, Jacob... This is where he had his dream, the dream of the ladder. Everybody knows all about Jacob's ladder. They even made songs about it. Okay, There he was, he was sleeping, and he put a rock under his head, and he had a vision of a ladder going from the earth up to the heavens, and there he saw angels going up and down the ladder, and there he saw the Lord looking down from the top of the ladder down on him. Or maybe it was down there next to him. We have no idea what it was, but he saw something. Now the rabbis write that this place where Jacob had this vision was Mount Moriah. Same place where Abraham was going to sacrifice Isaac up. The same place that they say where the Temple Mount is. I can't tell you whether that's true or not. They they don't really know for sure how it is. All we do know is that that this place was a special place that was touched by God. And God used it to reach out to the people that he was making a covenant with. He first gave his covenant to Jacob's grandfather, Abraham. And then he gave it to his father, Isaac. And now he was reaffirming that with Jacob himself. One family received this covenant from God. Out of all the families that went before them, And all the families that would come after them, God chose the family of Abraham. He chose Abraham, he chose Isaac, and he chose Jacob. 
And to them he gave the promise of the land. He gave them the promise of the land that we know as Israel today. But yet, the land that we know as Israel today, for all the fuss that everybody is making over that little piece of ground, it doesn't make any sense, does it? But it makes sense to Satan. And it makes sense to God. Because it belongs to God. The land doesn't belong to the Jewish people. The land didn't belong to the Israelites when he gave it to them. They were stewards of the land. The Jews in the land today are stewards in the land today. It's not their possession, so it's not anything that they should be bartering away. It belongs to the Lord God Almighty. Amen. He gave it to them. And if you're not a proper steward of it, what does the Lord do? He takes it away. He punishes you. So what is our job in this? Our job in this is to support those people that are in the land that are trying to hold the land. I don't support those that are giving away the land, trying to do away with it, but I support those that are in the land and they're trying to keep a foothold in that land. And we are told to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Though it is a place that doesn't really have much peace, but we are instructed by Scripture to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. So we have to do what we're instructed to in, in Scripture and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We need to look back to the promise that God made to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Because there are times that we forget about God the Father and God the Son. And what about the Holy Spirit? Where does the Holy Spirit, what part does the Holy Spirit play in this? The Holy Spirit's a comforter. The Holy Spirit's an encourager. The Holy Spirit's a helper. The Holy Spirit helps you to understand the Word of God. When you study your scriptures, you should pray for illumination by the Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit would help you in understanding the Word of God. When you meet someone that you're trying to share the Word of God with and about Yeshua, pray for the help of the Holy Spirit. The Ruach HaKodesh in Hebrew. Ruach is spirit. Ha means the, and Kodesh is holy. So it's the Holy Spirit is how it's pronounced. So we need to pray for the help of the Spirit. For without God's Spirit, what do we have? Without God's promises, what do we have? And Romans 4.13 says, For the promise to Abraham and to his seed that he would be the heir to the world was not by the Torah, but by the uprightness of his faith. Abraham was justified by faith. We are justified by faith. We're not justified by the keeping of the Torah. We keep the Torah because that's what he tells us to do. We keep the Torah because we love him. And he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. So what does it mean? What, if you say, well, I have faith, but I don't have any works to go along with that. Well, then you've got a problem. Because what does your faith mean? If you don't validate your faith through action, then what do you have? Anybody can go around saying, I believe. But then the question is, what do you believe in? Somebody will say, I believe in Yeshua. I believe in Jesus. What do you believe in? What does that mean to you? I mean, has anybody really told the person you know, when they said that? Well, what does it mean to you when you say that you believe in him? What do you do? What does scripture tell us to do? How are we supposed to validate our walk? People, we need to understand because we're living in times that are changing quickly. God's moving. Moving faster and quicker than he has before. And God made us a promise and I believe in that promise. And I hold to that promise. And I won't let go of that promise kind of takes me back to the woman who had the issue of blood and she reached out and she grabbed hold of the hem of his garment. How many people know what it means to grab hold of the hem of the garment? It means to grab hold of the tzitzit, 
which are on the hem of the garment. Why the tzitzit? Because they represent the commandments of God. They lead you to remember the commandments of the Lord. So that in turn should make you remember the Lord. She reached out and grabbed a hold of his tzitzit and he felt the power go out of him. What power went out of him? To heal her. He gave it to her. He allowed it to go to her. And she wouldn't allow anything to keep her from reaching out to her Lord. So there's nothing in this world that we can say or we can do to justify not reaching out to our Lord. He's the only one that we should be reaching out to. He's the only one that we should have in our lives. If you don't see him, it doesn't matter. It's your heart that he looks at. He doesn't care what you look at on the outside. How many scribes and Pharisees and Sadducees were his followers? They didn't come until later. Those that came and believed in him to begin with were fishermen, tax collectors, and the common people. Seems like the higher you go, the harder it is for you to to give yourself over to the Lord. Because then you have to deal with surrendering everything that you have to Him. And that's hard for people who have a lot in this life. Never think that whatever you attain in life is through the power of what you do. It's through what God does through you and what God does for you. In Galatians 2, 9 through 15 it says, For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power. In him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh, by the circumcision of Messiah, buried with him in immersion, in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the tree, having disarmed principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. We're buried with him through immersion. What's immersion? Immersion is a physical act that you choose to do in order to validate an inner spiritual change. The reason that you are immersed in water is to show that something has changed inside of you. You're making a public declaration, look, I am a believer in Messiah. He is in my life. And you also can be making a statement that I have reaffirmed my walk with him. And then there's also the immersion in the Ruach HaKodesh, in the Holy Spirit. If you're immersed in the Holy Spirit, do you have to speak in tongues in order to validate that? No, it doesn't say that in Scripture. And I'll give you a prime example in Scripture of this. When Yeshua received the Holy Spirit... He had gone through water immersion, through John the Immerser, commonly known as John the Baptist. His immersion was validated in the giving of the Holy Spirit was by the dove that came down and sat upon him. Did he speak in tongues? Not that I know of. It doesn't say it in Scripture. Is tongues a valid gift of the Spirit? Yes, it is as long as it's done according to what the Bible tells us. Everything must be in order. God is a God of order. He is not a God of disorder. The God of disorder, small g, is Satan. And Satan works on the body just as he works on unbelievers. He will do what he needs to do. Put everything in their proper order. And your walk with the Lord will be that much easier. We're not promised that it's going to be a bed of roses. It's going to be hard. 
It's going to be a hard walk. And at times we're going to try to wonder how we're supposed to get through it. But you know, if you relinquish everything to the Lord, He will see you through it. He will get you through it. And He's doing it. He's doing it. I know what I need to do because the Lord leads me in what I'm supposed to give to you and what I'm supposed to bring to you. So I condense it and I try to hit on the spots that I need to. I don't try to do the entire Torah portion. It's impossible. The only way you can do it is spread it out over a week and study it on your own. And I would hope that you're studying on it before you come here on Shabbat. Because if you're not reading it every single day, because it's divided into seven sections. Each weekly Torah portion is divided into seven parts. And you do a little bit each day until you come to Shabbat when the whole thing is brought together. But there's always themes in these sections. And you tie the themes together and these themes take you to other places and to other things. In Genesis 18, 18 and 19 it tells us, Since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I have known him, in order that he may command his children and his household after him, that they keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice, that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. Abraham was a man that God loved, that he chose out of all the people on the earth to make his covenant with, to make a covenant that would start with him and go all the way down to everybody else who would ever live on the face of the earth if they believed in the Lord. And it was more than just a land covenant. It was a covenant about a relationship, an intimate relationship with the creator of the universe. He chose Abraham and everyone who would believe like him. Not just the Jewish people, but everyone who would believe with the faith of Abraham. Abraham is the father of the faithful, not just the father of the Jewish people, because at the same time, he's the father of the Arabs too. And we need to remember that. In Galatians 3, 6 through 8, just as Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness, Know then that it is with those of faith who are the sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, And you shall all the nations be blessed. Preach the gospel beforehand to Abraham. And don't we also read about in Scripture that all those that have gone before, all these fathers of the faithful and even these women of the faith, it, we are told in Scripture that they caught a glimpse and saw the one who was to come. They saw and they embraced the promise of Yeshua. Isn't that something that's great? So it's not something that started in the New Testament when he was born. He was born before the heavens and the earth were created. He lived long before that because he was the son of God and he was with God always. In Hosea 13, 14 and 15 and 14, 9. Shall I ransom them from the power of Sheol? Shall I redeem them from death? O death, where are your plagues? O Sheol, where is your sting? Compassion is hidden from my eyes. Though he may flourish among his brothers, the east wind, the wind of the Lord shall come rising from the wilderness and his fountain shall dry up. His spring shall be parched. It shall strip his treasury of every precious thing. Whoever is wise, let him understand these things. Whoever is discerning, let him know them. For the ways of the Lord are right and the upright walk in them, but transgressors stumble in them. Amen. Transgressors stumble in them. The upright walk in them. Whoever is wise, let him understand these things. Whoever is discerning, let him know them. For the ways of the Lord are right. And how do you know the ways of the Lord? In the Torah. The Torah tells us 
what the Lord expects from us. I'm reading this book right now. It's called A Crash Course in the History of the Jewish People. Of course, it was written by a Jewish rabbi. And you know, the Jewish people, for as small a group of people as they were, played such a huge part in history. And you know, I believe that God used, used them and is still using them not just as the holders of the land right now, but also he was using them for his purpose. Because without them, there would be no Messiah. Because if we believe in the validity and the truth of our Bible, that it's through the line of Judah that Yeshua had to come. It was through the line of Judah and through the line of David that the kings of Israel came. And who is the last king of Israel? Yeshua. He is of the line of David. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the master. He is the king. He is the Lord. He is the son of God. He is God Almighty. In Psalm 95, starting at verse 1. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. In his hands are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands form the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice. We are the sheep of his hand. It's not by accident that God made leaders out of a lot of shepherds in Scripture. Moses spent 40 years learning how to be a shepherd. Why? Because God was going to give him one heck of a flock of sheep. <laughs> David, he was a shepherd, and yet he slew Goliath. And God chose him to be the shepherd of Israel. I think some of those people might have thought that, Lord, this is not really a blessing. But you know, what God calls you to, you have no alternative but to surrender yourself to it and follow his lead and his calling. When we look at the story of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we see a story of men who matured in their walk with God right before our eyes in the pages of Scripture. Look at Jacob. He started out his life as the second born. He came out holding the heel of his brother. So his name was given to him, Yaakov. What does it mean? It means deceiver. It means heel grabber. And you might think that in what he did in his life, that he did that. The rabbis, when you read their commentary, they go, Esau was a hunter. He was a man that went out there. Jacob was a Torah scholar. I kind of take, I don't believe that Jacob was such a Torah scholar. At least not in the early part of his life. But as you watch him, and you watch the things that he went through, you see that he became a disciple of the Lord and the Lord was able to work through him. And the same with his father Isaac and the same with Abraham. They matured and they became true men of faith, men of God. That's why they're called the patriarchs. They are the men that we're supposed to look to in Scripture. Don't look to imitate the things that they did in their weaknesses look to imitate the things that they did in their faith. And Galatians 1, 19 through 22, For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him whether things on heaven or things in heaven, having made peace through his blood on the cross. And you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, 
Yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. Won't it make your heart feel good in the day of judgment when you stand before the Lord and Satan tries to come before the Lord and tries to say, you know what he did or you know what she did? And Yeshua turns and says to his father, they are one of mine. And then this scripture should come to mind because that's all he has to say. And I'm sure that the father's going to say, Satan, be gone. Father, we give you thanks for today in the name of Yeshua. We thank you, Lord. And I pray for your spirit, for your Ruach HaKodesh, Lord, to come upon each and every person in this congregation. And you would fill them with power and with the gifts of your spirit, Lord. And let this be a spirit-filled congregation according to the way you've laid it out in the Word of God in Scripture. So, Father, help us to bring it all together. And become that one new man. We thank you. In the name of your son, our Messiah, our Redeemer. Yeshua HaMashiach. Yeshua the Messiah. And all God's people said, Amen. to our television audience come and enjoy yourself through our website you can find all kinds of materials all kinds of videos all kinds of audio teachings all kinds of written teachings then join us on our discussion site our forum Torah Talk Shalom everyone Shalom everyone